In this video, I will explain how to set up Evening Lightning to provide basic illumination for the scene. I will add a skylight. I will select the cube map and upload a white ladder map into the slot. I will choose post process, type in infinite and check the box. Then I will immediately select bloom and adjust the exposure. Before the main adjustment of the lightning, I want to talk about a reflected light. It's known that dark colors reflect light less, while white colors reflect it more. I want to demonstrate this visually. Currently, I have one gray material assigned to all objects. This one. I will change its color and let's see how the landing in this scene changes as a result. I will set the color to white and the light from the objects reflects stronger. The scene becomes overexposed and the opposite happens with dark colors. Therefore, for lighting adjustment, the overall tone of the object is important. If we do not take this into account and adjust the light on a uniform gray scene, then when we enable the material display, the light will appear differently and we will have to readjust it. Thus, before adjusting the light, it's better to create several materials. For example, three, white, mid-gray and dark and assign them based on tone to the objects. Let's look at the reference and note that, for instance, the sofa with cushions is dark, the lamp is dark, the kitchen is dark, and the sun with the chairs is conversely not light, on the walls and the ceiling. Therefore, I will first choose dark objects like the sofa and assign it a dark material. And so on. Throughout this scene, the black materials are set. Now I will change the grey walls and ceiling to white. Now, when the overall tonal scene is set, we need to edit the exposure so that the white looks white and isn't overly exposed. Post process, exposure and let's edit. About like this. Since we will be creating a night color, I will add a blue tint from the hero map. I will go to the skylight and in the light color selection, I will set the color to blue. Just a reminder that our skylight consists of a sphere with upper and lower domes. And by default, the lower dome is black. And we can change this. By default, when adding the first color source, the luminescence starts working. We need to bake the scene, so I will turn it off. In the post process, I enter the global method and switch it to none. Here, I have light that appeared from the last baking. But when we bake it again, now, this glow will vanish. And we will configure a new together later. Next, we need to set the skylight to static mode. Because we will be baking it and turn off ray tracing shadows. Now everything is ready for baking. Let's go to build in the light mask grip. I will drop it by default here. For the test calculation, these values will be sufficient. I uncheck the box and press build lightning. The scene has been baked. I want to slightly adjust the exposure. Next, we will start configuring the light sources. We will set the light on the dining table. For this, we go to light, spotlight and set it up. It's convenient to place it exactly in the center, from the top view. Configure the light source. The spotlight has an inner radius and an outer radius. The source radius controls the softness of the shadows. The higher the value, the softer the shadows. Let's lower the intensity of the light source. We will set the temperature and define the radius, well, then which the light will spread. We will adjust the glowing part of the lamp a bit later. Next I will make a light from the chandelier, also using the spotlight. To avoid confusion, I will rename this spotlight, then I can copy and paste it 
Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And already move it under the chandelier. I will configure it in the same way. Now I have set the correct light, but I want to add some fill light as well. I will do this using a point light. I will also position it in the center. I will immediately lower the intensity. I will set the temperature. The radius of effect and the softness of the shadows. Next, I will configure the kitchen lightning. For this, I will add Lloyd, rectangle Lloyd. I will change the size. And uh, with the help of these two primers, I change the angle of illumination. Next, I will set the temperature and adjust the intensity. It should be changed here, in intensity. I can notice that currently there is noise in the shadows. To fix this, I input ray tracing and increase the sample proportion value. We can see that the noise is diminishing. I will set the light from point lights from light. I will place it in the required position. For now, I will adjust one light source. Now I can copy it. I will move it. We have these crosses appear because our light sources need to be set to movable mode. I set it to movable mode so that I can edit the light in at any moment. This one, this one too, is set to movable. And here, the light sources are set to movable. I will slightly reduce the intensity of these two spots. I will select both at once and change the intensity. Next, I will set up the lightning in the hallway. I will copy these spots. But first, I will rename them. Now I can copy the composition and move it to the hallway. I will rename it right away. I will copy the second spot and place it in the required position. Now I will set up the point lights in the living room. I will copy the light source and move it. In this version, I will try to use AES file. To do this, I clear the AES and drag a special AES map into the slot. The character of the lining has changed. Now the light source needs further adjustments. I will rename this light source and copy it. Using the hotkey G, I can hide and then show the controllers again. I will copy three light sources at once and move them opposite.
I want to increase the intensity of these point lights. So I will select them all together. Hide the controllers and change the value. I will shut up. The loading in the corridor. I will do this using a rectangle light. Now I will configure the light from the wall lamp and do this with a self-illuminating box. For this, I will move to shapes, select cube and change the size of the cube. I will do this by changing the scale. The geometry here is not entirely correct and the light fixture is missing. Here, the geometry is not quite right, and the light fitting emits light in both directions. To prevent this from happening, I will add an additional cube here that will block the light from this side. I will apply a self-illuminating material to this object. The material looks like this. It's simple yellow color. The light intensity can be adjusted here, either via the perimeter or through multiply. We will assign the same material to the pendant lamp as well. However, I will choose the same material but with a lower intensity so that this light fitting does not emit too much light, as I want to control the light here with the spotlight. I will also assign this same material to the chandelier. Additionally, we need to apply the self-illuminating material to the spots. We also need to adjust the background outside the window. I have a prepared blueprint which I will drag and configure. How else can we create a background? We can import a sphere with inverted normals from 3ds Max. Or we could create sphere here and also invert its normals. Then we can assign material to it, in which the spherical image will be connected to the emissive slot. To assess the result and see how the wall light illuminates, we need to bake the scene. For this, we go to Build to Light Maps and click on Blue Lightning. The baking is complete, and we can see the light, and we can see the light from our wall light. The only thing is, I would reduce it a bit. I will lower the intensity just a touch. I also don't like that we have a very harsh color coming from the spotlights in the kitchen. Let's fix this. I will select the light sources and increase the source radius. The blue lighting has softened and the same goes for these two light sources. I will bake it again to see the new color with a different intensity. The scene has been baked and now I like the intensity. Let's take a look at this scene's interior. The lighting is set. The only thing is there is not enough glass at the window. It's missing from the scene. So I will add using plane. Shapes. Shapes. Plane. Plane. I will move and scale it. I will assign a glass material and make sure to uncheck cast shadow.
This is needed so that no shadows are cast by the glass and it doesn't abstract light from entering the interior. To create reflections, I will add a box. Reflection, capture to the scene. Now the glass has a reflection. In this video, we covered how to create a blue field light. We discussed how to implement linear lightning, how to set up light from pendant and spotlights, how to use an IES and set up self-illuminating materials in this video. We're nearing the end. And I will show a few screenshots taken from this interior.